All right, we may as well start it. So how's everyone doing today? It's uh, back to school week here and uh, did not get off to a great start, but everything's good now. And uh, looking forward to being alone during the day for once. It's been, it's been a couple months. The plan today is to do a little test and review of a plugin called Retro Vibes. Uh, this is a first plugin from Fragment Plugins, and uh, they reached out to me through YouTube and uh, offered me a free copy. So we're going to try that out. In order to do that, we're, we might have to actually record a bit of a song uh, just to get some source material to work with. I got the whammy bar fixed on this one. Change the strings. Uh, I, th I think I may have changed the the, uh, the gauge of strings and I, I balanced the uh, the whammy bar better. The problem with it before, last time I showed this on stream, was uh, the arm, the nut that holds it in, was disconnected. The really annoying thing is there was the whole purpose of changing the strings other than them being a little dead. I got it all like disassembled, put back together, strings on, and I realized I hadn't put the whammy bar back on properly, so I had to take it apart again. I'm happy with it. Intonation is slightly off, which is annoying because I don't know if you can tell, but the Allen key holes are blocked by the strings. So you, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you're supposed to do it, but one of them got shifted as I was restringing. So uh, you can kind of hear that, but it's uh, sounding really good. Other than the tuning issues from bad intonation. It's a real fun guitar to play. So I did that one after the stream last week. I think all in all, it was like almost three hours to take off the old strings, fix the bridge, restring it, and then balance it and tune it. I think it was about three hours. I don't know how people do that quickly, but I guess as long as you keep the same string gauge, you can do it pretty quick. I didn't like the idea of, of uh, cutting the strings before putting them on, like cutting off the ball ends. It's kind of weird, I know, but so what I did was actually string it backwards. So the ball end was at the tuning, uh, tune, the regular tuners, and then I clamped it down at the, the bridge. I don't know, that just seemed like a safer way of doing it. Maybe it doesn't make any difference. It probably doesn't. Maybe it's faster to, to do it, to just cut off the ball ends. One string at a time keeps the bridge in place. Yeah, unfortunately, because that nut came loose, I had to take all the strings off. Um, and I, I think I was changing gauges, so I needed to balance it anyways. I got this little ruler. I just used that for uh, under the bridge to hold it in place. And I did order one of those um, like proper shim things um, for next time. So it'll probably take a while to get here. The, the Timu order that I mentioned a while ago, that actually got canceled and refunded. So we're going to switch to headphones, switch over to my project. Prism Retropop. This is the drum sound that we're starting with. So just a starting point for for a, a drum beat. And then um, we're going to add some layers with the Poly D, so to the GoPro. Unfortunately, it's far away. Uh, but here's what we've got on the Poly D so far. And I actually don't know what I'm going to play. But yeah, that's the, uh, that's the, the tone we're going for. Jam something out. I, I really don't know what to play. Let's do click track on, and we'll do a, a count in before recording, 78 beats per minute. I'll turn off pre-roll, but I'll turn on count in. All right, I don't want to jinx it. I'm going to keep that just as, a, as it is because I'm not going to be able to play it. a second loop of that for sure. We need to speed run this.
Not bad. It's pretty well in time. I'm okay with that. So let's um, layer on um, another sound. And actually, let's do a virtual instrument. Maybe we'll just use the Poly D as a controller for... Let's do um, let's do analog dreams. Let's try that one. Now that the sequencer, got to turn that off. Yeah, I forgot what I played. Originally interested in the sequencer, but it actually doesn't feel in time. Oh, because it's a uh, eighth notes. So this is probably too affected, isn't it? I think I can make that work. I am doing real bad <laughs> with this. Okay, so. Okay, that'll work. And I just need to fix that one note, which was wrong. And. It's a start. Suggestions from the chat for what to add next. Um, I do think I want some toms in here. So do I do I have some toms that would fit with this? Portamento lead. Let's try that. One of them. Maybe that one. It's a bit hard to um, kind of get things into like a, a set, depending on how they're labeled. They work. Okay, so those will go with that track. And then these three tracks can be a, not duplicate. They will be a drum folder. And then these two be in a folder called synths. If you're wondering why are they changing colors, it's because I have SWS auto color enabled. Okay, so these definitely should be probably, definitely probably over here. Do something like that. And then one of them. 
I'm using a razor edit there to move that over. A region around this so that we can get to that easier. Okay, and I left uh, 11 bars empty here so that I can put in a intro and... Okay, so, <laughs> spoken word poetry. These suggestions, I'm not sure about these suggestions. Portamento lead, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it, but um, let's do a duplicate of poly D and... Turn on, turn glide on. The, the main issue is that I'm going to play all the wrong notes doing this. So uh, a sound like this, I kind of need reverb or something like that. I want to save all the effects for, for the plugin. But uh, let's, let's try it. Okay, something like that, I guess. Is it terrible? We're doing one takes for everything. Not sure about that last note, but, um, Double time this and we have a Cars song. I'm more into like Gary Newman. So when I, when I hear the, the like mini Moog kind of sound, that's what I always kind of end up going for. Um, where I should be going for more like a, a Tycho sound. Anyway, um, I think we have enough to work with here. All right. Did we cover everything, guys, you think? I think that's the end of the video. I always reverse a sample I've played around with, pitch it up, three, five, seven, up and down, and play around with ping pong delays, randomly create some cool sounds or little melodies. That's cool, Corey. Yeah, so I have not really been looking at the chat at all. Have I ever tried, like, jamming with people? We did one jam thing for, for whose channel it was. Um, it may have been on the IDDQ sound YouTube channel. We did like a little jam and I just played like the same thing over and over on my um, mini log. Uh, the plugin you were thinking of is Rhea something. No, Ninjam. Ninjam. I mean, it's, pre it's pretty cool. It may have been for Mike's channel. Mike was there. Alejandro was there. And um, Aria was there. Who else was there? Hi YouTube, I'm Dad <laughs> was there. Adam was there. Mike was on drums. Yeah, I mean, it was quite a while ago. And the cool thing, I think, was... was, um... after, I didn't even realize... um, or it didn't get mentioned at the time, but at the end of the session, you can basically dump everything that was recorded into the session, and it's, like, chronological. There's even every chat message as notes in the MIDI. It's pretty cool. But Ninjam's not something I use very often. Okay, uh, Q&A for the next uh, 45 or so. If you didn't notice, okay, recap of last week. Last week we did the massage gun sound design thing. Yesterday morning I cut up everything that was recorded, anything that I figured was good, faded, evenly spaced, and exported that as a, a file. So if you go to the stream recap video I published yesterday, you can get the sample. It's a FLAC file, but I'll just play it again here since I've got it. 
I think there's a bunch of cool sounds. There's over two and a half minutes of, of edited samples here. I didn't uh, noise reduce. I did, um, I did limit them. So you can see some of these are limited, but I just figured it sounds better that way. I'm not going to play the whole thing. If you want that for your sound library, that is linked in the previous video. I think you can definitely make some cool dubstep sounds with that or monster sounds, monster sort of vocals. What would it be like to use some of those sounds as a reverb? That might be cool. Just chopping them up into just like uh, by transients and then um, triggering them randomly from a arpeggio that'd be pretty cool that was an update on what we did last week it's your turn tell me something cool there was a uh an interesting plugin that i did not watch the full video for uh it's called silencer it allows you to trigger a reverb by notes something like that when a midi note comes in it opens up the reverb but then when it the notes off it closes once you play a sound you will now see the indicator light up This means it detected a signal and triggered time gate, which resets the reverb. To make the difference clear, turn off the trigger sensor with the switch below the indicator. This is how that same reverb sounds without time gate. And with it. Since time gate. I think it's a pretty cool idea. I haven't looked into pricing or anything like that may not even demo it but i can see how that sort of effect can be so tedious to um to do like without the plugin like you would have to print your reverb or set up uh, a plugin like duck like basically sidechain compressing you miss the differences basically the reverb starts over on each new hit rather than just like washing through it's almost like the reverb is applied to each individual hit and then truncate like it, it it shuts off and restarts i don't know it would be like you have to um print the reverb to each drum hit and then trigger them but this can be done in real time with any of the reverbs you already own and yeah it's interesting i think there are other effects in here there's midi triggering and audio triggering um and a full effects chain, something like that. I have only just like kind of gotten the idea of, of what this is, but it's a long video and um, I, this is a brand new plugin. Wide Blue Sound. Let's check the website. This is the same company that did the uninstaller, the audio plugin uninstaller. We checked this out, or I mentioned it a few weeks back. I actually did install it and it worked i lost it uh audio plugin uninstaller so uh yeah this plugin or this app uh seemed to work really well um it will even find things like um mac audio drivers and allow you to uninstall things that way so what was a plugin i would like to get rid of just, just to give you an example of uninstalling the plugin. So let's say like Satala, AEX, and Audio Unit, and VST. Let's say we'll just get rid of those. Click on Uninstall. It shows you what files are affected, where they are, things like that. Hit run, Uninstall, Proceed. And then it tells you which things are, are complete, and then it's done. It's actually... Just that simple. Right now it's free. I don't know how long it's going to be free for, but it's worth checking out. And then 
um, since that release, they have a bunch of new plugins, I think. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't remember seeing these ever before. But the silencer thing uh, came out in, I think, in the past week or two. And it's an interesting plugin, for sure. Worth looking at. Price of it is $99. So not an instant buy, but if it's if that's the sort of sound you want, I think it's probably the best way to get it right now. The uninstaller is Mac only. I don't know why they don't have a Windows version of that. Plugins definitely get messy. I don't know. I don't know why it is. Uninstalling things on Mac is generally pretty easy. You just drag it to the recycle bin and then empty the trash and it does it. But sometimes there's things that get orphaned. It's not always easy to um, to remove a certain format of plugin uh, and have everything still work. I've I've had things break from that. And hopefully this this tool can actually manage that better. I don't know for sure though. I want to be here for you guys for another half hour. So if you have um, questions, comments, things like that, let's talk. Acon Digital Unveil Remix plugin, which is another um, kind of STEM creating tool. So it seems like a lot of companies are coming out with this sort of thing like at the same time. Serato, uh, FL Studio, Acon Digital, Isotope. A lot of companies are either updating or, or adding this sort of feature uh, very recently. Are there any like uh, magazines or websites that you use to keep up on uh, audio technology news, things like that? You haven't been keeping your ear to the ground regarding new stuff? Yeah, you can just tell me about new stuff for your studio, new techniques you found in Reaper or anything like that. Scripts I might not know about. Kind of off topic, do you guys use any other forums or sites to chat, learn, share your tracks? For the Reaper blog, there is the Facebook community. There is the Discord. So if you want to join, hopefully that link still works. Discord, we definitely hang out every day there. Um, I'm still using the Reaper forum a fair amount. I check it daily, at least my subscribed threads. I'm not too busy on Facebook, but it is a good place where there's there's a few thousand people that can answer questions. Um, I go in there once a day or something like that. I used to be pretty active on many forums, uh, but I guess this is kind of before Facebook communities or forums took off. Who is getting this uh, Native Instruments or Isotope music production suite? You guys interested in that? Isotope has a bunch of new updates and uh, Guitar Rig from Native Instruments has been updated. It's still weird to me to think about Isotope being a Native Instruments brand. I don't... I don't know. I really don't know about that. You get KVR emails, a few deal sites, often new plugins I get from your YouTube videos. Or from YouTube videos, yeah. I feel like I just got Ozone and RX and stuff like that, but like, time flies. You, you gotta buy a new one every year. Brian, you're thinking about it? It's good stuff. It can be overwhelming, the amount of stuff there. You have to figure out if it helps you get to your goals or not. If you even can define what your goals are with Reaper, music production, sound design, whatever you're trying to do with Reaper. Pure EQ plugin from Sonable. So it looks like a another one knob EQ sort of thing. I've never used the Pure series of uh, plugins from Sonable. They had something that I uh, demoed a while ago. I actually just pulled it up this morning and I was like, oh, I still have this? Where is it? Balancer. Focusrite and Sonable. I think it was Sonable. Yeah, Sonable made this plugin that would, you could learn, hit learn on some source, whether universal, male or female vocals, things like that. I made a video about this. And there's three different sort of EQ curves. It was kind of cool. It was sort of like a, the, a neural network AI kind of thing. Um, for, uh, shit. Wrong button. Wrong button. <laughs> I just, I keep bumping this today. I don't know why. 
I keep bumping my stream deck. I definitely forgot what I was going to say. I kind of liked it. It kind of made things sound good. But they never updated it for M1 Max, uh, and they discontinued it. So that kind of sours things for me, because they offer this free plugin and then discontinue it, and uh, there's like 90 or $130 plugins from them now. Kind of sucks. That was the second time I hit the stream deck. The first time I muted my mic accidentally. Uh, Cable Guys re release Filter Shaper XL. I saw uh, Weaver Beats talk about this in his news this week. Yeah, so it's an update for Filter Shaper. It doesn't work with Filter or Shaper Box at this time, but probably the next update for that, it will. And it's just like an advanced envelope-based filter, dual filter or multi-filter. I, I, I haven't actually used it or any of their stuff. Davi, you got that one? Cool. Awesome. I was asking you guys, what do you use to uh, keep up with the news? Uh, for me, it's the KVR Audio News Record.org and Sound on Sound Magazine, their, um, their news feed, mostly. I should really switch to uh, another feed reader, but those are the sources I mostly use. Record covers some of the same things. Lots of sample libraries and plugin promotions and things like that. So new releases and sales are usually promoted um, both on KVR Audio and Record, but KVR Audio doesn't have the sound libraries. So if you're looking for free samples, the record.org newsfeed is really good for that. Yeah, deals, free stuff. He covers everything. Um, the other thing I was going to mention, um, there's Bedroom Producers blog, I think it. Weaver annoys you. Same, <laughs> but I still watch. Can you post that link for keeping up with the news? So the app I'm using is Feedly, record.org. There's one, kvraudio.com. The last one is Sound on Sound ma Magazine. You like white noise studio for plugin tests? I do not like white noise studio. I can't get into it. Or, um... White C. I'm, I'm not really a fan of his videos either. I respect everyone that gets out there and makes videos because it's not easy to do. And if they find success with it in some way, that's amazing. That's awesome. Some of the stuff is not for me. And that's okay because there's a lot of stuff out there. Another useful news site is Relinks, R E A L I N K S. And so this is made by Xrame, um, who is a, mainly a scripter for Reaper. And he is promoting things that he finds useful. Um, I didn't know about this one. Video processor library. So there's an overview of that. One of my videos. Nice. I hope he's charging for it. <laughs> I really hope he's actually charging for this because not enough reaper scripters are charging twenty dollars canadian a class good that's awesome i love it so um i will put this free preview link in the in the chat yes yeah, Stephen. good point there's um and we all have different tastes in music and and we all have different backgrounds and just things we find interesting there's youtube's a great place to find people that are interested in the same things as you as niche as it is, or as broad as that is. Hopefully you, you find that match of like the niche that you want to learn more about and the presentation that you like, and it's just perfect balance. I have to admit, like right now, I'm not making the videos that I want to make, but I just I just can't at, the, at this time. <laughs> and, and I've committed to 50 streams this year. So, uh, and I feel like since we started doing the weekly live streams, I'm so much more comfortable on camera. I don't always have anything to say, but I'm just like, I'm not nervous. I'm not getting diarrhea before every stream. It's amazing. <laughs> um, I would like to be making highly polished, researched, multi-camera videos with perfect editing, perfect performances and everything. I just can't do that at this time. I burned out trying and failing 
So we're doing streams and and editing that into videos whenever I can. And I am still doing everything on my own. I'm not a fan of, you know, the dead space between um, asking a question and waiting for the response from the chat. I have this on the ultra low latency uh, mode, but it is, there's definitely a delay. No, the delay is the same whether I'm on OBS or YouTube window. Streams are hard. I'm in a good place for managing all of the um, technical stuff. I'm not having constant issues with OBS. My internet isn't crappy recently. It all just works. We I get it two and a half hours of, of streaming, up to three hours of streaming with no, no dropped frames today at all, which is nice, super nice. I upped my bit rate slightly. I don't know if I really noticed a difference uh, last time. Chef Jesse, 66.6 thousand subs, demonic. It's funny. Yeah, of course, number of subs doesn't really guarantee views, but it is nice that the number still goes up. We should discuss, discuss streaming settings. I can show you my settings now, I guess, but I'm on a Mac. So if you're not on a Mac, the settings may not uh, make any sense to you. I'm okay with just sitting in silence alone, but if it's after asking a question and you have to wait 30 seconds, it's, uh, you know, that's a little awkward, I think. For OBS settings, there is a course you could check out from Epos Vox, the de definitive guide to OBS Studio. It is $200. I'll put a link there. He's very active on YouTube as well. He's got a ton of content, two videos a week, roughly, about OBS, about microphones, about cameras, about all things related to streaming. His studio is nuts. It's, it's really like three or four studios. Didn't know there were air purifiers, purifiers you can wear as headphones. Yeah, you got to check out these, uh, these headphones. They're crazy. Is the Verum one from Verum Audio. A bit heavy, but they sound good. I mean, they sound like speakers. They don't sound like headphones. It doesn't sound like you're wearing headphones. It sounds like you're listening to uh, some good speakers. Are they good for mixing? I think they are. I think they're good for mixing and mastering. They're open back, planar headphones. Are they custom made? Yeah, they're handmade in Ukraine. They're a bit hard to get for obvious reasons. Uh, but I got these last year. And they're actually well known enough that they are supported by most of the uh, headphone correction software. I actually just got this um, Hornet VHS. Um, I'm not going to cover this today, really. Um, but I did see that the Verum headphones are in here. I've yet to check this out. I just installed this uh, this morning or yesterday, something like that, very recently. So Verum ones are in there. Verums are also in the monitor, not monitor effects chain, in real phones, which is the headphone calibration stuff that I use. That's usually what I use. It's been a bit crashy past month or two. I don't know why. How come in Reaper on the MIDI, when I pan, it doesn't pan. And sometimes with the velocity, I would bring it down and the sound doesn't decrease like FL Studio. Pan is just a command that may or may not be received or listened to by the synthesizer or the sound module, the sound, whatever is being triggered by the MIDI. It may not do panning. It's sort of an older thing where you were um, arranging and layering sounds within one, um, one synthesizer, like an arranger keyboard. The Tritons, the, uh, what are the other ones? Phantoms, I think. You know, those big arranger keyboards that had like 16 different instruments um, that you could s layer and play all at once, sequence and things like that. Like MIDI pan is before the sound module 
and Reaper's pan is after the sound module. So in general, you always want to use the one that affects the sound, not the one that um, is for the instrument. Why does it do it in FL Studio? Great question. This, the same instrument should have the same rules. Uh, things like contact should follow panning, but again, it's going to depend on the instrument. Sometimes the velocity would bring it down, it doesn't s decrease in sound. Again, this is something like velocity isn't always automatically linked to volume. And things that are multi-sampled should have different velocity layers, so different st sets of velocity affects which samples are being triggered. Something like a organ sound is not going to be velocity sensitive because organ, an organ is not velocity sensitive. It has a volume pedal. Yeah, some synths are just not velocity sensitive. Like Synchrotron saying there, you pan the audio, not the MIDI. So um, let's just look this up. I'm going to add in um, contact. Let's do orchestral. Okay, so... Recontrol MIDI. I'll just put Recontrol MIDI before the plugin. And in here, I'll use the control change. That one works because contact responds to um, all of the general MIDI stuff that it's supposed to because it's a multi, uh, multi timbral instrument. So when I turn this here, you can probably see here that this one is moving. These are, they're not linked, but when I move this, it sends the MIDI CC, whatever the, whatever the pan number is, CC 10. Uh, and that moves the pan. But an instrument like, like if I get rid of contact seven there and I put in um, recent, very basic synth, has no pan control on it. So the pan doesn't change, volume doesn't react. None of those things are going to make a difference. Hopefully that answers your question. In my experience, most instruments, unless they are set up as a multi timbral instrument, so uh, sample tank, contact, um, UVI workstation, any of the like orchestral things, so like the Spitfire audio stuff should all respond to um, CC10, the volume, volume may also be called dynamics. It should be able to respond to those things, and then it's your choice if you want to program those within the MIDI, um, if you have controllers for those when performing the MIDI, or you could leave it as a mixing decision. And to me, it's a mixing decision most of the time, if it's orchestral stuff. Hopefully that answers your question. Let me know if it does or doesn't. What is the microphone you use, and is it a USB or XLR? This is a Shure SM7B, and it is XLR. Fades don't work with MIDI. Um, fades on MIDI items. They may or may not respond. Um, again, it goes back to the velocity thing because a fade here is actually scaling the velocity of the instrument. So it may or may not actually respond to that. So let's do... Um, I'm not a big fan of this current version of contact. No, I don't want to save. Let's load in a drum. So we'll do... Uh, there's my snare. All the same velocity, and I'll put on this fade. So a fade on a MIDI item actually scales the velocity. And um, the other thing to note with this is that you can use the volume control which is either a knob or the, the top edge can be dragged down, uh, depending on your preference. But this is also velocity when it's on MIDI items, which is different than turning down the track volume, right?
it's the same sound being turned down. But if I, if I do this, it's playing different articulations. You have to choose where that makes the most sense. Sometimes you have to boost the volume, but trigger lower velocity samples because they have more bass, things like that. Yeah, for drums, it is cool. Just being able to like take even the same pattern and just doing velocity variations can change a lot of the sound of it because you're triggering different articulations. Yeah, super nice for that. You were noticing a sound difference with kicks. So that reminds me of this setting here. Um, if we go to... Okay, so like if you're importing samples, if you import a... Here's just like a tom sound. But when I import a sample, there's no fade on it. And that's how it should be, in, in my opinion. But the defaults do not. So the default is to... Um, the default is like this. Create automatic fade in. And I think it's even 10, sec 10 milliseconds, not three. Do not set fade in, fade out is unchecked. So if I grab another sample here and drag that in and zoom in, there's half your transient taken away by that three or 10 millisecond fade in. It's not a good default setting, in my opinion. You lose punch. There's another setting that's invisible. Preferences, audio, tiny fade out on playback stop, tiny fade, fade in on playback start. Uncheck these because these can drive you nuts when your kick drum sounds one way the first time you play it and another way when you loop it. So let's turn that on just so you can understand. Let's get a kick drum. Let's take that one. Okay, so let's loop this. I've got the tiny fade turned on. May or may not be able to hear that. It's just in the initial um, sound of it. It should sound exactly the same, play it once and play it twice. But if we turn Tiny Fade in on playback start, it's subtle, but it can ruin your day when you notice it. Um, it can be hard to find why certain things are sounding different. And different sound sources will just sound different in general. Let's let's just take the low end here. Can you hear that how that's kind of soft? And then it's a little bit more punchy when it uh, after it loops. Let's grab the global sampler. Can we see the difference? So you can kind of see the difference um, slightly. The bottom one is more accurate. So the first one is, is faded slightly. It's not always immediately obvious. I would turn that off. It is 11 o'clock here. I got to make my lunch, stretch and all that before my call at 11.30. But that's going to be it for the stream. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining the live stream. There's quite a few of you today, so I really appreciate that. We will do this again next week. And I definitely have more plugins to check out. Uh, there was a bit of a mix up with one of the plugins I was supposed to check out this week. And I think next week I'm going to have to book off a little bit more time just to dedicate to the stream. I might. Uh, block off um, all of Friday stream days um, so I don't have yeah I really appreciate that you've 
come by and and pretty active in the chat today as well. I will uh, see you next week. Tell your friends. See you later. <laughs>